So I saw some people on the Berghain subreddit talking about this um, new phenomenon that some people have been noticing. I guess it's, it's happened for a while, but I think some people are only noticing now because the club seems to be getting popular, more popular every single year and a whole new cohort of people start going there and start noticing things and talking about them. And I feel like it's a decent discussion to have. And one of them being that some people have noticed whenever they go to Bergen and they're queuing nowadays, because the queues nowadays are fucking crazy, even on quiet weekends, you're still having to queue a minimum of like two hours and shit. It's absolutely insane during the peak hours. But some people have noticed if you go to Bergen, you'll see some people who don't queue. They're not queuing in the regular queue. They're not queuing in the guestless queue. They just walk up to the front door, have some words with the bouncers, and then they get let in with a little head nod. And usually most people would surmise that the people that get let in that way are regulars who you know live there most likely and probably go every single weekend or are kind of extended friends and family of Berghain. Now personally I don't have a problem with it. I've seen it happen plenty of times and I have to be honest maybe I'm a bit of a fucking Berghain cuck and a bit of a groupie but I legitimately smile when I see it. It makes me smile when I see people rock up to one of the biggest clubs in the world and are able to kind of jump the queue and select a few people and just get walking that way because what it means is that Berghain still, regardless of how big it is, they have this um, they have this thing where they give the people at the door autonomy to kind of run who's allowed in and out. Because I think some clubs don't do that. Some clubs it's basically, it's a top-down thing where the owners say, hey, if the person is on the list, they can't get in. There is no personal relationship with the bouncers. They just basically act like security and that's basically it. But I like that there's a kind of harmonious sort of like through line as a family type of thing that like everybody has ownership, which is why they all take the club so seriously and you can't really fuck around in there because they all kind of, kind of, you know, refer to it as their home, as their house. So because of that, you allow the bouncers to have autonomy at the front door so they can judge who's sketchy, who's not sketchy. And if they are cool with somebody, they can legitimately be like, hey, we like this person. They're here all the time. They're always a good vibe. It's always a pleasure to see them. And they can give them that courtesy by allowing them in. Whereas I feel like in, or allowing them in without queuing. Well, I feel like in London, we don't have that. Regardless of how big the club is, you really have to kind of dot your I's and cross your T's to make sure you're able to get into some places without having to queue. You actually have to make sure that all the things that you need are sorted. You can't rely on just, oh yeah, this person knows me. I'm cool with that person. No, 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 because every day is different and everybody, you know, and the door, people keep changing. It's not the same person there all the time. You have to really, really go out of your way to make it. And even sometimes in London, even if you throw a party at a club and you're known to be there all the time, it's not going to affect or change anything. And you have to be kind of okay with it and sort of relax and sort of let that go. I remember I recently had to kind of go through that via my time kind of going to fold we had one of the kind of biggest and best or not biggest but one of the best clubs that we have here in london and i remember for a while i was going there quite often you know and i think again i think it's maybe a sense of entitlement or whatever it may be but i guess i kind of felt like i deserved more out of just attending a club which is fucking pathetic really to be honest but just going to a club as a punter and having a good time you're thinking you deserve more you think you deserve to go in the green room you think you deserve to get in for free you deserve to get on the list all this sort of nonsense things right you deserve to play there when really no one deserves and you're not fucking entitled to anything but then over time more in, more importantly i kind of started to get the vibe that one of the founders behind fold wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of me right just i don't know why maybe there was an occurrence that happened, you know, sometime you know, back in the day that might have resulted in me maybe not being, you know, chucked out. However, who knows? Something may have happened there. Who knows, right? But for whatever reason, I've always got the feeling that one of the founders wasn't really the biggest fan of myself. So ever since then, it's always kind of felt a bit weird kind of trying to be the friend of the club when one of the main founders is always there doesn't like you and it kind of feels like you're trying to suck up to people and i'm never do that right i'm never the suck up person and i've always said before that i don't say it as a brag or as a boast i think it's kind of harmed my career in general that i can't play the game and be a little bit more shake hands kiss babies type of shit and i think i quickly realized that and then start basically backed away from doing you know going down that road and then just decided to kind of just go there as a punter and ever since then i feel like my life has been far better because i legitimately go there with just like you know wanting to have a great time 
which is always a great thing because I think that sometimes trying to get, I don't know, sometimes I think like getting involved in a scene maybe is something that you probably should do really hard and go extra crazy at when you're really young and don't really have much pride or don't haven't have much of personal achievement in your own life and shit and don't have much of an ego because then that can kind of set you in good stead for the future. But I feel like once you reach a certain age, it's kind of difficult to then suddenly be the <laughs> licky ass person because you just know too much, right? You just got too much information um you've got too much whatever it's just too much you just can't do it so i could i could i personally couldn't do it so i'm happy i didn't but it is quite nice to know that a club of berlin's berkheim size sorry does have that option they do let people have that option where you know there is no such thing as a vip really even though there is not really there's no vip tables obviously there's guest lists and stuff but there is also the option that if you live there and you go there every day or every weekend and you're a good vibe and you have a good personal relationship with the door pickers bouncers wherever they however they call themselves there is the option of you being able to kind of jump the queue i kind of like that because that's a better option than having these locals and regulars jump the regular queue because that always is going to send me into a rage because i feel like that's incredibly disrespectful to the people that queue especially if you don't ask for permission just assuming you should be able to jump the queue because you live in the same city the club is in it's fucking insane but i like the fact that they give the option or there is a possibility actually there's a possibility that they can grant you the fucking you know they can fucking wave the magic wand and ordain you a special, you know, type of customer, a special type of punter that's able to kind of go in there for free. Now, if that was me, I'll jump the queue. If that was me and I was able to be that person regular, I would always make sure to have some cash in my pocket as a tip. I wouldn't just go in there and just be expecting to go in for, you know, jump in the queue. I expect to jump the queue. I expect to get in quickly, but I'd also make it sure it's worth their while by, you know, as a little kind of courtesy. It's not like a bribe, just more as a courtesy to let them know, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's what I would personally do. But I think, you know, most people don't. They just take whatever free is given to them and kind of keep it moving. But I actually don't mind that there is that option. I think if I, like I said, plenty of times I've been in the queue and I've seen people jump and go right to the front and get the little head nod. It's just filled me with, it's just filled me with happiness to know that there's clubs out there that do it because in London it doesn't exist. Like you could go to a club every single weekend here in London and they could look at you like a fucking peon every single day <laughs> that you go there. They're not going to give a crap. You have to really, really go out of your way to get on your knees, suck them off and be, try and be friends, try and work there, be a fucking bar back, try and be a door picker, work in a cloakroom and then maybe it might work for on a night and I just don't have the patience or the ability or the capacity or the bandwidth to do that. I'm just too old. I've just seen too much. I just can't do it, unfortunately. But I feel like if you can do you should be able to do it if you're younger. If you're younger and you're trying to get involved in the scene, I think doing that whole thing is really important. Like, don't discount it. Don't look down on it. Um, try and do it because that really will get, get you a long way in terms of jumping you know forward in your career and also just in you know immersing yourself in it having some connections that may actually pay dividends down the line you know you may form a collective with these people you may start a little party series a little label you know all that stuff is really important to go that way but yeah i saw that post and i thought that'd be interesting to kind of comment on so big up Bergheim for having that option be available big up then for making that be available what are you guys saying you're saying what i'm um, kissing us exactly um sounds like a drug smh yes exactly they send the secret elite vip package yeah I, I, again i like it because i think <clears throat> all these things in general they add to the law of the place you know that's what it does it adds to the overall law so everybody's under this assumption no everybody's knows kind of the vibe of the club they know you have to kind of be behaved in the queue so it essentially kind of leads to a well behaved dance floor because everybody's kind of building up the experience of going there they want to get in they're nervous about getting in then they finally get in the last thing they're going to do is cause a ruckus so the same thing goes if you're in the queue and you saw somebody walk up to the front and just get in you might research it and google it and find out like what the fuck's going on how, how are some people just allowed to go in like what's that queue on the other side then you'll start to get more knowledge about the club understand and maybe in the back of your mind when you keep going there every weekend you're going there with this kind of hope in the back of your mind oh maybe i might be lucky enough to become a regular that kind of gets the head nod and i'm allowed in all those things play into it so you know these little micro things that they do i feel like really help in terms of making sure people behave and also just generally just help with the ambiance because everybody that's going in there is just happy to be there happy to be part of the quote-unquote extended family however flipping cringe that may sound so big up Bergheim. continuing on from that and just kind of further 
getting on my knees and sucking off the fucking tate that is Berghain. We have to talk about the September lineup that just dropped. The September lineup for Berghain just dropped and I am over the moon with it because again, it's another return to form. And again, for me, the biggest highlight is that the Panorama Bar rooms are really good. The Panorama Bar rooms are really amazing. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for that room. I think it doesn't get the love and appreciation that it probably should get because Bergen is obviously the main space. But I feel like Panel Bar is definitely up there with one of the best programmed rooms in the world when it comes to house and disco music. Personally, for me, um, I really, really love it because I'm not really going to go in the garden, even though the garden's good and it's got good disco vibes in the summer. I just can't do it with my fucking allergies and hay fever and shit. It's not going to happen. So I kind of avoid it and just go when it's a bit cooler. And for me, when it's cooler, Panel Bar is just up there obviously one of the first weekends is one of the ones i love first weekend of september um the first of september on a friday finest fridays they got eddie Falks, katrina monty luke and radio slave playing in panama i'm actually surprised cause i don't know why i didn't think radio slave would be a panama dj i'd assumed he'd be more burkhani but i'd actually really love to see radio slave play in that fucking room then the following day um, on the Saturday, they've got in Bergheim main room, they've got Fireground Live, Answer Code Request, one of my favorites. They've got Antes, DJ Nobu, who I absolutely love. He would absolutely crush Bergheim. Um, Mary Yuzikaya Yuz playing also. You've got Pink Concrete, Quelza, who's been getting so much love and hype. I think the last event that he actually played, I forgot what end the track he played that was fucking incredible. It was some sort of classical tune. I wish I remember off the top of my head. But he absolutely killed it. Everybody was going crazy about it. And the other one that everyone's going really hyped about is Rekka um, Zalan, who I've seen a couple of sets of hers on on Whore. Um, mostly kind of vinyl stuff and a really good vibe. So she's going to flip and smash it. I'm actually surprised to see that she hasn't played there sooner. But uh, Rekka Zalan debut on the 2nd of September is definitely looking very tasty. That's one of the better lineups I'm seeing. And of course, on the same day, the lineup in flipping Pano Bar is great. Ready in lead playing. You got Annabelle Gaspar, Boy Shorts, Carl Cormac, Gabriel Quartain, Natalie Serres, or Orsi, and Run Like Hell. So it's a very disco y type of vibe. Again, Cormac for me, one of the best disco DJs in the world, personally. He kind of reminds me of like the heyday of horse meat disco. He probably wouldn't take that as a compliment because maybe he thinks he's better than those guys, but. I think he's definitely a reminder of that. Like it's just that elation, that kind of guttural feeling of just joy that he plays when it comes to disco music. The fact that he's smiling behind the decks, having a twirl, and he's one of the most, uh, you know, well manicured and impeccably dressed DJs out there in Cormac. So big up him. Then we've got PPJ live in Seoul, and then a few other standout ones. Again, another good panel bar. Natalie Robinson and Russell Lee L. Butler playing there as well. I've got a lot of tunes of his I play, and then we've got a this club nuts here on the following on the 9th of september is fucking crazy you got barker playing jane fitz fuck her to be honest i'm not really a fan of her personally because you know one of her fucking dull ads tried to get my channel fucking taken down because i had an opinion on something dumb that she said on the internet i forgot what it must have been it might have been some covid thing because i think she might have been one of those you know people that play during the covid thing so doing the whole play grave so you know she can get fucked but mary lake i'm a big fan of nini h i love um norman H nodge of course is a legend philip apache of course great Sidif assi Sidif adassi sorry obviously resident dj there smashes it and then again in the flipping panel bar room this is one of the better ones you've got arm etap kyle luzi mary moxatia who's obviously great um Massimano Perigaro playing Moxie I think who's I think the London based DJ I'm not really seen her play in a long long time so I'm not really sure what her vibe is but she probably would do well there and then Ralph and then again skip those live ones I'm really interested in that and then we've got the bite night five year anniversary happening on the 15th which looks really good um you've got face fatale silent servant um Volunsky and then, of course, you've got Rekka playing in Panama also. And then one of the other ones which I really like is this lineup for the 16th, which you've got um, Maso Dietman. You've got Ogazon, who's great. Again, another person I discovered through Whore. I, I wonder if they got a little tie in with clubs as well in terms of booking, because I wouldn't have known of Ogazon. I wouldn't have known of Quelza, of all these people, if I didn't see them play on fucking Hall. Even though they were all, some of them are great producers, I, I found them mostly through that platform. So I wonder if they've got a tie in with clubs in terms of booking, or if they might even open their own club. You never know. Um, it continues. Um, then we've got Roman Flugel, Tasha, Zisco, 16th, Axel Bowman, 
Net, N Bauchhammer, one of my favorites residents there that plays there, Roy Perez, Ruby Savage, Tama Somo. That's going to be a good one. Matthew Johnson playing long time. They'll see Matthew Johnson. That'll be a good one. And then going down, you've got Panda Bar Room with uh, Baraka and Baron Yates, which would be great. And then this is this is a pretty decent one also with Mike Dunn on the 23rd in panel bar playing alongside mike star that would be a great if they're playing back to back that's going to be great like one after the other mike dunn and then mike star fucking brilliant and then we continue oh and then we've got beautiful swimmers also that same lineup i've got a few tunes of his and my fucking dj box and then i guess one of the better ones is the last weekend of september which is the 30th you've got in Bergheim, you've got erica fadi moham jacko jacko josie rebel big up her uk ledge Kerry, Marco Shuttle, Robert Hood, and Speedy J. Hopefully, Speedy J is closing, was the most people want. And then Panama, you got Boris, Eli Escobar, and Hada Holland, who I love, Jose Cafe, and Paramita. So, some great lineups. Obviously, the ones that stand out will probably be the 30th, and then I think, as I said, the 16th, and then the first weekend. Those are going to be some of the better ones that are going to be happening there. Or sorry, or the ninth. Those are going to be some of the better ones there. But again, September lineup is looking tasty. If anything, these this hopefully should be the quieter one. So if you do want to go and you don't want to queue up too long, I'd assume these months would be the more quiet ones because there's no real big standout blockbuster lineups as they were maybe in, in July or in August. So this might be the better one to go to if you are still debating whether or not to kind of have a Burkhan experience sometime soon. So check that out. Available now on Burkhan's main website. The September 2023 lineup is out there and available.